Hi everyone, it's Nora here, and today we're gonna see my sketch editing workflow. I'm gonna explain how I edit my sketches on Photoshop after I scan them. I do a lot of sketches and I'm gonna show you a bit of that today. And what I'm gonna show you is how to automate, how to create an action to be able to reproduce the initial steps for editing a watercolor or an ink sketch in Photoshop. All right, so let's get started. So I do many of these sketches on my sketchbook. That's a Moleskine sketchbook that I'll show today as well. And as you can see, I do many on each of the pages. And even though if you do a high resolution scan of them, you save a lot of work, there is still some work involved if you wanna print them or if you wanna publish them online, depending on your quality standards as well and what the intended outcome is. So this would be all the pages on one of my sketchbooks that has 60 pages. And you know, this would be one of the sample sketch scans that I would get out of my scanner. I'm right now using a Canon, uh, Canon Scan Light 20, uh, 220 scanner and I get this at uh, 1200 DPI. And then, uh, you know, you can, if we zoom into here and now we see this is the output of what I would consider an edit sketch. I leave the background white and I remove all the texture of the paper in this case. And sometimes I reformat the text that appears on my sketch. Uh, so from what we have uh, you know, in here, uh, we go to, to something like you can see there, uh, an edited version of the same sketch that I actually, in this case, I've published online together with a little story. Uh, this is another example, so you just scan that and you can see I reformatted the text and, and moved it to center it out with the, with the watch. And this is the Moleskine sketchbook that I am currently using. I've gone through four of these and I have the, the next one waiting. It's a Moleskine A4 size 200 gram paper uh, that is thick and heavy and can uh, hold watercolor pretty well. Uh, you know, each of these pages, it's really important that each of these pages is uh, A4. So the scanner that I have uh, can scan the whole page at, at one go. It's really tedious if you have something like a 14 inch paper or other formats that don't fit that you have to do two scans and then stitch them in Photoshop. So I'd rather have something that is smaller than A4 so I'm able to scan them in one go. This uh, at the moment is something that I do because you know I like sketching, I wanna keep improving, but I do as well to publish on Sketch Nonoma. This is the blog that I've created where I upload sketches with little stories. I've gone through uh, four sketchbooks, as I mentioned before, these are all the combined pages, maybe you know 60 by, by uh, four, so 240 pages more or less, uh, and a lot of different uh, styles of sketching, some of them only with ink, some of others uh, with watercolor. And, you know, I sketch always from what I see. So here I put my camera on the table and then I started sketching, uh, recording a time lapse uh, while I was doing that. And, but I never sketch from, from photography, or at least I try never do it. I never put sketches from photography in these sketchbooks. Uh, these are some examples of edited sketches that I've published already. As I said, I published online and I do so every uh, Tuesday. There are many of them now, more than 60, as I recall, and each of them goes with a little story and there are many of them. So you can, I don't know, some people uh, see them on social media and other people get them on newsletters, signing up by email, but you know, there are many places where you can see them. They're at sketch.nono.ma. And you know, what are we editing today? So I am going to open Photoshop and open a few of the sketches and go through the entire process that I use to, you know, after the sketch has been scanned or the page has been scanned, how I crop it, how I store it, how I open in, shop, in Photoshop. And we're going to create the action that I use usually when I start editing sketches and then go through that process. So from these two pages, something that I'm gonna probably use in, in a podcast or in a post uh, in the near future, we're gonna edit these two, like the, the box of diskettes and the diskette. And also I got this one that is a bit different, it's more like a architectural scenery. 
that has a more white and color space and that will play out in because it, it takes a bit of a different way of editing. Uh, what we're going to do, as I said, is a Photoshop action. So something that scaffolds the Photoshop file the first time we open it. So in the future, we don't have to go through these steps manually. And there is a consistent naming, a consistent structure and a consistent process that we use to edit the sketches. This is something that I've been doing for years now. And I just want to share it with you to make sure that uh, you can benefit from it and maybe even give me feedback on other ways that you do that could be better. We're going to see things like uh, effects, like curves, levels, hue and saturation. We're going to see things like folders, layer masks, uh, patches and, and other things and, and Photoshop actions. So one thing is that if you like this video, uh, please go and click on, on like because that will uh, let me know that you like it and that I have to do more videos like this one. And also if you want to know when I do live streams or when I upload new videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell. All right, so let's get started. I hope this introduction or overview was useful for you to know what we're going to do right now. All right, so as I said, we have a, a set of steps that we're going to follow. I just showed you the overview and now we're going to record a sketch editing structure action in Photoshop that is going to let us auto generate this in future drawings. And we're going to see a few concepts like how I store the drawings, um, how uh, layer masks work, what the high pass effect is, and also how to export and save, or at least how I do it. So I've pre-selected these uh, three sketches. So as you can see, these are the ones that I showed you before, the building and the two disket drawings. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go for the uh, easiest one or, or quickest one first. So I'm going to drag this onto Photoshop and, and we can see the drawing, right? So one thing to note here, what I do <clears throat> all the time is I put a timestamp or, or a date in which the sketch was done. I don't put the time normally unless it's something really salient and I try to just put some sort of label, some sort of um, text that lets me know what this drawing is about. You can see, for instance, here it's uh, October 6th. This is October 4th, September 20th, October 6th, and October 4th, right? And each of them has its own label that could be used to go with the drawing when you publish or print it. I didn't mention before, but I also do high resolution print. That's something I'm not going to cover today, but in separate videos, I'll probably cover the printer I use, the setup I use, the type of paper and the format and how I print. All right. So what's the first step that I usually do? I go here and look at the date and what this sketch is about. So it's an IBM HD disket, right? So what I would do is just hold on to that day. So October 10th, so 2004. The first thing I do, as I said, you know, I have this sketches folder where I have the timestamp on the front, the location where I sketched, and then a brief description of each of these drawings, right? So this one was done in Panaderos and our Christmas socks of Bea. You know, there are many, um, many sketches, many naming, but the, the only thing is that it's time stamped. So I, by looking at the drawing and knowing when it was done, I can find the folder where it is and a description that with one eyesight, I can see more or less what the sketch is going to be about. All right. So first thing I'll go into my folder. So let's just do it here first. So it was 20, let me just zoom in here, 20, 10, 04. So this sketch was done at Rocio and it's an IBM HD diskets disket and it's actually a 3M disket right so we can uh, just go back and see what description the M yeah high density all right so we have a name and I can put my folder on my archive so it gets sorted by date. So this is one of the last ones this is the last one that I've edited. And the first thing I do next is because we're not going to edit anything else from here today. I make a copy 
of my scan page and I make sure to use the same name for that file, just appending dash scan. So I know that this is going to be the original scan that came out of the scanner and I haven't done any modifications to it except for cropping. So I don't care because I've made a copy. I don't care about everything else. I can just select this thing here. So the area in which the drawing we're going to edit is, I'm going to press letter C to crop and then enter. And then this is going to be what I'm going to save. I usually, I used to save at quality 10, but now I'm saving at quality 11 just on the scan because that way I don't lose quality. I can go back to the original. So if you do 10, you see the size is slightly smaller, but for this reason, 1.5 or 1.3, yeah, 1.5 more megabytes are not really something important. So okay, we save. Then this drawing has been saved. I can close this page. And now in our folder, the first thing we have is the scan. If I go and show you the, the train that we edited before here, the folder structure looks really similar, slightly similar to what we are going to do today. So the scan file, you know, is 20 megabytes. I'm not really going to open it. Contains the scan version and the dash edit contains the high resolution edited version. And then this crop has just a slightly different version. And then the, the sketch version has the version of like low resolution that I well or lower resolution that I upload to the internet. All right. So we get back there to the folder where we have our scan and the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to reopen this on Photoshop. Now is when the editing process starts any time that you open a raster image in Photoshop and you add other layers or effects. So let's just try to add this effect, this contrast, you know, if we press command S or go to file save, Photoshop is going to put here the Photoshop extension. Let's just try and, and save that. So we save that and now we have a PSD and this file goes is like huge compared to what we had before. The format is keeping all the, the image uncompressed and keeps the, the folder structure. I mean, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know this already, but with this, I mean that as soon as we open this file and start adding layers, when we save, we're going to save to PSD. That's the Photoshop format that we want to keep the background image is the original sketch and we also keep it without modification on the PSD at all times on the Photoshop file. And just to show you here, I already have a few actions that I've created before. This is what I'm going to show in this tutorial today. We have a structure color and this is because, you know, when I edit, I create a set of folders with naming and, and effects that that's something that I have shown here today. We're going to do it really similar to this one. And how does that happen? So as a brief thing, as a brief description of what actions are, in case you're not familiar with, we're going to create an action that, you know, convert to black and white and rotate, right? So we press record. And now this is, you know, this red light uh, switches on here. And this means that it's recording all the actions that we do inside of Photoshop. So now, for instance, I can apply a black and white filter. So we make it black and white. We go to image rotation and we rotate, right? Now we go to actions and stop it. What this does is that now it lets us repeat these two processes anytime we want. So we can repeat the black and white filter addition and the rotation anytime we want just by clicking on play here. So this display button. All right. We're going to close again and we're not going to save. And now we're going to open a different folder. Uh, so a different file. So I'm going to go to sheets. We're going to open, for instance, this one and we're going to run our action. So I'm going to click on play here, this play button. And as I play, it's adding the black and white filter and it's rotating and I can do it again. It's going to add the black and 
white filter again and rotate and over and over and over, right? We can do it many times. And if we go to our history, we can go to the original image to revert that. And, you know, here we have these ticks. So we can either, um, for instance, we could, this will totally stay file commands in this action. This is not undoable, All right? So let's cancel here. So what I wanted to do is click on this text, right? So this means that if you play this action, what is unticked is not going to run. So let's deactivate the black and white adjustment layer. So now I click and only the things are ticked. So in this case, rotate first document are gonna run. So I can click and click and click, and then the action runs over and over and over. All right, so we're gonna delete this action. We're not recording anymore, and we're going to get back at where we were before. So once again, open this drawing. This is the, the original scan. You can see if you zoom in at 100%, this is high resolution. You can see the texture of the paper and you can see a lot of detail. If I zoom in more, you start seeing pixels, right? Pixels because you know we, we only scan at 1200 DPI. We can see that here. So we can see that is 1200 DPI and this document is huge, it's 5,000 pixels in height, and this is just a crop of the page. If we go back to, to that page that we had originally, so this is not even the entire page, this is 12,500 pixels in width. All right, what are we doing here? So we have this sketch and that you've seen before. So we have this sketch, and what we're going to do first is preview one last thing. This was the, the structure color action that I have in here. This is something I created before, as I said, and I'm gonna play it. So if I click on play, a bunch of things are gonna happen. This file assumes that there is a background uh, layer here that is locked, and that's what it expects to, to start running. So let me, let me show you. So if I click on run, this does a bunch of steps. As you can see, it added the, folder structure or an effect structure that I have here. Nothing really happened to the drawing because all these effects are untouched. They're like as when you create them and don't touch anything, but they're there, right? It worked because the background layer is locked and exists. If I go back, you see this is all the history of things that the, the recorded action is doing. It's like changing layer orders, creating layers, renaming layers, adding effects and, and doing many, many things. Right, so we get back to the initial step and I'm just going to do something to break the definition. So as I said, this plays the action and relies on this being called background and being locked. So I'm gonna run this thing. Well, actually it doesn't. All right, so it, it's able to just do it ignoring what is in there. But with this, what I wanted to say is that many times if you're action relies on looking at the layer that is called background or called sketch and performing actions on it and you don't have that folder or that layer named that way in the file it's going to fail it's going to tell you i didn't find this type of folder or this type of uh, layer <coughs> okay we're back at the beginning we're going to start now recording recording the action And I have this folder here, sketch editing workflow. All right, so let's try to make this properly in one go. We're going to make an action to edit color sketches. So we need the light folder, the black folder, and the color folder. The dirt mask is to see what's below the other layers. So below the dirt mask that has like grain or things that haven't been edited properly. White patch is to remove grain or things that are really uh, not meant to be there, like strokes or, or things that are dirt that is on the page. Uh, the black is meant to darken the darks and, and edit only the darks. The white is meant to lighten the whites and maybe even make them completely white for them not to show up. And then the color is meant to identify where color areas are, adjust the saturation, the levels, the contrast, and make sure that the color looks as similar to the one that is on the page. Or as the color that you want the sketch to be. 
you can make also alterations and you know the post processing uh, step is actually part of the the sketching process in some way because you can alter things and and fix things or complete um, unfinished drawings all right let's get back to photoshop so we press here in new action and i'm going to call this um a sketch editing structure we're going to put a color here so let's choose red for instance and we're going to click on record now we're recording anything we do is going to be repeated afterwards first thing i'm going to go and unlock this layer so i'm going to name it sketch scan so this is going to be the original um, sketch that we that we have added to our file you see so that that's changed and i'm actually going to stop there i'm trying to show things as i go we have that there and we can go back to the beginning now to test that our action is working properly so we can now play it and that is renames that layer one thing that's cool is i can click here on set background so this is the last action in our uh, or yeah this last step in our action or the only one and we can click on record and this will begin recording from here and add everything we do uh, below that step all right as i said we're going to create a white let's do whites let's do uh, blacks let's do well let's put it in, in singular so we can actually rename things here it doesn't matter and we're going to add a a levels filter here so it's going to be empty i like to to delete the layer mask we're gonna add, so this is going to be lights i can check here so we have light dark light gonna add another levels filter here remove to delete the layer mask dark uh, in color we're going to to add a, a hue saturation levels curves uh, color fill I'll show what these things are for so color fill we add a color that is that is attention calling in some way and I'll show you how and we, we hide this. We delete the layer mask. Selection color. Um, yeah, so now we add a levels filter. We add a curves filter. We add a hue saturation filter. We put the color at the top, levels at the top and curves here. And we delete all the the layer masks right let's actually name our filters right we have almost all our structure already the other thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna add a solid color that's gonna be white i'm gonna put it outside here so we're going to instead of deleting the layer mask <clears throat> we're going to press on the mask and we're going to click command i for inverting the color so you see that this layer mask is now black which means that this white color doesn't show up anywhere unless we paint with white inside of here so it's going to be our white patch And now we're going to create a dirt mask. What I'm doing is I'm naming everything with, with uh, uppercase uh, capital letters. That way we'll know, or maybe, you know, a convention could be that everything that's been written with uppercase are things that are created by the structure and things that are created with lowercase are things that we add later afterwards where we're editing a sketch because we'll need to add other things as we edit a sketch. <clears throat> <clears throat> All 
All right, let's see. So we have everything we needed here. We're going to make sure that on the dirt mask, uh, we also can remove the layer mask. And we're going to set the, the properties here of this effect. So I, I, in case you're not familiar with this, so the properties panel shows up the graph or the interactive chart of the effect that you select. So if I select, and let's zoom in here. So if I select, for instance, color, hue, saturation, I get the properties panel shows me how I can change these things. The color curves shows the, the curves and then the level shows the level. So in the dirt mask, what I want you to do is to go and click and go really, really, really deep. You see what this does? Even though it's destroying the drawing, it shows up things that we were not seeing in the texture of the drawing. And when everything is edited, if we switch this effect on, we'll see things that are actually not um, visible to our eyes, but that are dirty on the image and might you know, create problems later when we print or when we publish it online. So we'll leave this layer off. We don't want to see that all the time. And with this, we have finished our uh, folder structure. So we've created it and we have it on our actions and we're going to stop. So now what I will do, you can see now we have the folder structure and now you can save this file and remove the, the scan suffix from the file and then we save it. So now this will be a file completely ready to start editing this sketch right? and we're going to see now. But first let's just play a bit and, and see if our action is working. So if now I go here on my uh, sketch editing structure and click play, you're going to see that everything has been created as we expected. So we have the, the sketch scan layer is the one that we unblocked and renamed. And we have all the filters above it. We can see the dirt mask showing up. And you know we could use the white patch to, to draw with white to patch things that we don't want to show in the drawing or black to remove it. So you can see, you know, this is something that we're not going to go in detail today, but if I click on option, at least on Mac, if I click on option and click on the layer mask, I see what's been drawn in here. Not sure if we can see that any other way, but option and click what happens here. So if I draw in, in white, and then if I draw in black, I'm swapping here colors with X, with letter X. So if you press X here, you will swap the colors. If you press D, you go back to the, to the defaults. And, you know, if I draw these things and then click on option and then on this layer mask again, you see how what I've drawn in white is showing the layer below. And this doesn't need to be white. It can be any color. So if I draw on the layer mask with white, it shows up and with black, it goes back and, and hides. I can also do in between colors, shades of gray for opacity. So this would be, you know, mid gray is mid opacity. And this is more notable if I reduce the hardness of maybe uh, white. So you see how the layer mask is actually um, a gradient from black to white of what's being shown and what's not. And this way, this is the way that you usually use to edit pictures that you want to crop because if you crop a part that is not on the picture um, by mistake, then you can recover it. So let's say if we disable the layer map, um, everything shows, but if we enable it, everything that is in black doesn't show. This is our current layer mask, which is a bit dirty. I can press command and delete to fill it and then invert it again. This is most useful when I'm editing sketches. So you could have this uh, sketch layer and say, for instance, I just want to keep this house. So you might do a, like a draft cut here, like a rough cut, which without too much care. And then you click here, you click on, let's see, 
it shows up the, the name. So this is add layer mask. If you click on add layer mask without a selection, the layer mask would be fully white. If you select with a selection, only the selection part would be white. So I can click here. You see how this layer mask is being added there. And now if I hide this, only that part of the drawing is being shown in there, right? So I could disable the layer mask. So I have the entire drawing there. I can enable it again. And now I can get my, my brush, for instance, get it in the maximum hardness. And if I draw in here with white, you know, it's, you can see I keep uncovering, uncovering the sketch. So this is something you will do if you wanna, you know, this is a non-destructive method because I can now show that there. I can now cut in here. You know, like let's just, just do a rough cut, not spend too much time with this. And I get this selection and I put the black below. So let's get in. We do command delete and we just put that black and then you know, we've dropped that part there. And so that's that's a really good way. This is how I usually do if I wanna crop things and not lose data. Okay, let's close this document. Let's go back to the um, PSD that we created with our structure. Um, you know, we're not gonna run the action again. The action is already run. We'll use it later for, for the other sketches. And <coughs> the first thing I'll do here, if I wanna be uh, particularly careful with editing this. The first thing I'll do is maybe just with the with the pen tool. So this is clicking on P or, or going here on, on pen tool. Let's just take a, a closer a closer look. So this is the pen tool. If you hover, uh, Photoshop will give us some um, some mini tutorial there of what the tool is for. You can see others here. And you know, command zero. Well, let's just get back here. All right, so what I was going to do, you can click on P and get that tool. And if I do this with a path, uh, nothing really shows up. I can click on here and make the selection with a certain feather radius. This is like the, you know, the, the softness of the path. And if you do zero, it's really, really hard. So I can, I can create that as a selection. Once you create a selection, we can do what we did before. We can apply this layer mask to some part of the drawing. So what I'm gonna do now is to start by zooming in. I can click F twice to to remove all the tools temporarily from the from the screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and just start selecting <clears throat> everything that's in here. This doesn't need to be super, super accurate because it's just a sketch and we're just gonna apply filters. It's not like I'm gonna apply a layer mask to crop everything. Otherwise, we would have to be a bit more careful. So just let's just see how this goes. And as I said before, everything is non-destructive. We can add or remove later, no problem. Right, so we have this uh, selection here. If you wanna show some of the tools while you're in this um, black mode, you can click option tab to just show the panels. You see the normal way is this, so you get a bit more room on the top. So I get just the panels show up while I'm working. We have this selection, click on P, make the selection and I, always like to, I mean, you can keep that uh, path as a, as a fill or something to keep that layer mask there. But for now, right now we're gonna, well, let, let's actually save it. So we could have here a selections folder. We could even do that on our action for it to be created. <coughs> and we're going to just create a solid color. So just to keep it like that. And we can say, this is our diskette um, layer. We click on command and then click here to get that selection done. And now on the color folder, I'm going to add a layer mask. So our color filters at the moment are only going to affect this selection, right? So with that, I usually, what I usually do is that I, 
I get everything else that is not on the colors uh, to black and white. You know, these will get black and white as well, but that's something that uh, we'll have to add as well to this type of selection. So let's just try and see what happens right now. So the this selection color, and this is something that I we probably need to add to our to our automation, to our um, to our actions, and we'll we'll do now. Uh, usually, I wanna put let's see, maybe multiply and and put it like this, like maybe 50 percent. So this lets me see where the color selection is made. You see how as I paint white in this layer mask. Uh, that shows up in there, so I could remove parts from here. And you might ask, why is this useful? This is useful because right now we're just letting this red color show up where my layer mask is. You know, we could say apply everywhere, but this is all also going to happen for the color levels, the color curves, and the color hue saturation. So if I disable this red and click, for instance, on the levels, you know, I can I can see my levels only affect the diskette at the moment. So we can, you know, you can say, let's just make this dark, right? That's because of the layer mask is, is filtering for it only to happen there. All right, let's get back. Okay. So we have said um, that the selection color we wanted to add it to our action. So let, let's just try to make that happen now so we don't forget. Um, okay, our action before was like this. So let's try to see if this happens. So high current layer, we record again, and now we click the selection color. You see by naming the folder, so the, the effect, now we can record with it because there's only one selection color layer in our file. And now we set this to to multiply and then our opacity to 50. All right, and that should be all that we want to include in our in our action. All right, so really quickly, let's save and let's um, and let's open one of our other drawings and try that the action is still working. All right, go here. Set is not currently available. You see, there's something that failed there. And this is maybe because the layer is hidden. So I need to make the layer visible before I do that. So let's see if we can add something here. So I've added the show current layer to the middle of of that action and then we're going to add another height at the end right let's try and if you're not catching this it's okay you could just have done we could just have done the action let's say properly from the beginning but it's good not to have to do the entire action from scratch and be able to add uh, extra steps or correct things as you go or you improve your workflow okay if i click here play uh, the command set is not currently available. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the extra steps that I added. We're going to go back to the start and we're going to run this again. Okay. So now that we have the dirt mask selected we're going to try and record hide that layer select this one show current layer set to multiply set to 50 set to hide and then deselect we're going to history again go to the beginning and then run this action hoping that it works and it does. All right, so now you see this? So now we have that, and if we were to say, okay, my coloring this sketch is here, 
I can set my mask and then I can start doing my my selections where, where the colors are properly. Right, and one thing that happens, and we're gonna close now, so our action has been updated. One thing that happens here is that it's really hard for me if I make a selection here to know what's selected because this drawing happens to be red. So you can easily, uh, depending, usually, I don't know if you have many red on your sketches or if you don't have color, but this selection color, we can just click on here twice and then select a different color. And that just lets us now draw here and know exactly where uh, the selection is. So we could do this like this, that's one way. Let's just try to use Photoshop's intelligent or AI based selection tool. So if we go to the magic one section and we do object selection, I can maybe, if this works, I can select this area and then wait. And what this does is it tries to do, I think image semantic segmentation. So it tries to detect where the parts of interest in this area. It's prepared, oh, it didn't really work at all. And I might know why this is. So you have to click here right now. We're on the color layer and there's nothing here. So you gotta click on sample or layers or uh, if you just go to the layer that you're interested in, so this one. So let's see if we bring the layers out. We're selecting the sketch scan and now making our selection. All right, yeah, so this is fairly good. I don't know if you can, with how much detail you can see it, but it selected the color areas really, really well. You can see things like here that you could just come in here and, and edit manually. But for the purpose of what we're doing, I think this is more than more than perfect. Yeah, the sketches, depending on, on your needs, don't need to be super, super accurately selected. And as I said before, we can always come back and fix it later. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that we're on the white color behind. We're going to press the the color layer mask and we're going to for this part you know this is more visible command delete and then that sets that to white you see this is the selection it's a bit clearer now how it was how it was done and now we can go on and fix it we could let's see if we can try the removal tool again to select those yeah it seems like that worked that more or less worked yeah, so the AI, and we can do sample all layers. So now here I can try to see it's helping me out in correcting those imperfections. So AI is helping us edit faster or better. Right, one last one. Okay, so this would be what you can call a, a layer mask, right? So we have this thing here, the black side, and, and what that is, is these are the areas of my drawing that have color, and I only want to apply my filters in them. So if we now hide the blue, and we go and put the saturation up to the top, or back at zero, only my areas that have this um, blue filter are affected. So we go back to zero. This is something now that I can play with. So I can simply pump a bit the, the saturation to make it look a bit more like originally on paper. And usually I pipe the saturation slightly up. So now, you know, this would be it for me. This would be what I will do to edit one of these sketches in terms of color. So I would now say, okay, this color part is is done. And if I hide, I can see the, the effect on uh, my color areas with the sketch, with my filter. 
All right. And we have the selection of the diskette that we actually have here as well on the color. So we don't really need that, but let, let's just keep it there. All right. Let's see our list <coughs> and see what things we haven't done. One thing that is missing here is, is the high pass. So high pass is something that we'll touch later. So we've seen layer masks. But let's just let's just make this a, a to do list so we can turn in and here I'm using notion for those of you who don't know it. So let's make a to do list. We've looked at the white fill, the layer masks, the um, recording of actions. We're going to look at this now color black and white groups. So the dirt map more or less the overview is done. And we're mostly done with this ones. Okay. We can move this up. Okay, let's go to selecting colors by range. Let's see how that works. This doesn't always work perfectly. In this particular sketch, we have a lot done already because we have these masks. So everything that is outside there, we can say, okay, this is going to be something that is the background and black lines. Um, but I'm going to show you what I do with the blacks better before. So I go into the sketch scan. So imagine this is just the, the original image. You can go into the original image and go here to the, um, let me just get out of here with F. So to select and I go to select color range, right? So this is the panel select color range. And then we get this menu. We get this menu here that lets us select between uh, just selecting the red, the yellows, the green, science, um, highlight, midtone, shadow. You can imagine you want to select all the greens in an image, science or other colors. You just come here and, and we'll see those uh, selected. I think we have some reds here. You see, we have some red color on the image and, and we probably have showed a bit of yellow, no magenta, no blues or a bit of blue with the color paper color. Sample color lets me just pick by color. So if I see the image, I can say, okay, give me this. And if I, one thing to note, not all the reds are the same. So if you, if you want to get, let's just zoom in here so you can see with a bit more detail. So how would we select all of this? If, you know, if I keep clicking, there are different tones of red. I can click here and I can hold the shift key and I can click on other areas and more areas and then that keeps adding the different colors that I I have on the image. This would have been another way to select the um, the red colors and this is probably similar to what the AI algorithm does. We could say okay give me the blacks or give me this color. The thing here is that you don't need to know what they are. You just say okay give me this this region of colors. I, there are some there are some grays in here. Let's see if we can get them. Yeah, th those are really similar to the whites. So you can get all the whites and keep holding shift and clicking. So th these are different things that you can, that we can do, right? So let's say these are all whites. And once you click on OK, you have a selection of that. So we can say, OK, now fill all of that with a color, right? So that's that's pretty neat. We can easily select ranges of, of parts. So let's say these are my whites. So we will keep this around for a second. Let's see what happens if we put them white. You see it's a bit too much, but it's actually selecting all the whites and making even even these parts that are a bit gray, they're making it a bit more white. So we'll keep that there for a second. But what I was interested in doing first is that I can select here the shadows, which are the blacks. And now I can see, I can see the image here, but I can see, you know, I can tell it how much darkness do I want. See that it's getting the shadows, not the blacks, because it's also getting the shadows in the, in the red. So 
in this case, in this case that we have a lot of color, we might be better off if we just say sample colors and, and we click on something that is really black. Right, and let, let's just go to the to the sketch. So fastiness bleeds into similar colors. This is not something we want, maybe for something that is more gradient like. But here we just want the actual blacks. So we'll see here the image, we see what parts are black and we just keep selecting them. So we might just go here, you see that the, the diskettes is also black. So we can add all that black here. And we'll go back. Uh, you know, this is gray and that's going to be a bit problematic, but because it's inside of the sketch, also the diskette, um, I can, let me just try removing it. Okay, I just, you know, this is just to, to exemplify or show what, what I do with this. So, okay, we select that. And by having these blacks, I can create a layer mask on the blacks. So these areas that I've selected. And now imagine I put blue here. So those are my, my black areas, supposedly. There are some of them that haven't been, haven't been caught properly. But what I usually do is that I like the black to be a bit darker. The scanner lights them, lights, lightens them a bit. So I could say, okay, you see, turn my blacks really low and you can see the effect in, in some parts more than others. You see, so that actually darkens what I put as, as black and also the watercolor sometimes fades the blacks. And you know, this is probably a bit too much. So we'll, we'll just get back to what it was and just apply a little bit. You can see now the, the, the overall effect here. Maybe even a bit less. All right, blacks are done. So this is what I will do with blacks normally with the blacks folder. And with whites that we selected before, I command click on whites, I click on this folder and then I select everything and then I can remove that, I can save. And here, what I'm trying to do is remove the texture of the background. And th there are a few things that are happening here that we're going to see. So the white, I can safely say set to black and white. So some of the, the little color that might show up in here, you see there's like a bit of orange colors get set to, to shades of gray. And the problem is that here, we're actually losing detail on the drawing. We're safely seeing some of the white areas clean up, but we're losing detail and that's not something we want. But for that, we are safe with the color layer. So we can command click here, we can go inside here and then we can say, okay, for the white effect, command delete and we're not going to use the white effect anywhere inside of the diskette. So we leave this thing, we click here, and now the background is completely clean. Let's go into the zoom or the this white view again, so we can select here, right click on the black or the color that you have, click on custom, and then we can select, for instance, the white color. And now is the moment where, you know, you can say this is edited, but we're going to do more things here. So we're going to, well, first we'll increase this, um, this light effect because I want to make this a bit darker. And, you know, this is making some selection there, but we can actually draw it on white and that's probably why this hasn't been taking effect that much here. Probably not too much, but everything that is outside of the drawing, we can set to that black and white. All right. Yeah, exactly what we said before, we, because we have the selection on the color, I can 
click now in here and make a an intersection and remove from here so the effect is applied to what's outside but not to the colored areas all right so let's make a smaller filter here so it doesn't get distorted and now is when the dirt map comes into into play so we have our filter here we have the drawing and we click on the dirt mask you see when i switch this on apart from the drawing getting destroyed we get these little artifacts these are artifacts that are on the paper and that even if i increase the the contrast are going to be there and are not going to to let us they're they're not easy to clean up right so what would i do with this right i would get into the white patch that we're going to make right now we're going to make red just for displaying purpose of the mask and i will draw in here right i can draw there but making this white so let's say i draw in there and i draw in there and now we just get this back to white right Let's just make um, an overall view and this way we can you know we could just remove little artifacts that are in our in our drawing the thing that I usually do I what I usually do to to make this faster is that I just select the drawing parts so these are the things that I want to keep and these are the things I want to keep So now I invert selection, so select inverse here. And now we select what's outside and we just fill in with white everything that is outside. That way, you know, we can see that all the all the things that are dirty on the paper are cleaned up automatically. And now I can come here and if there are things that have been left out, I can remove them by hand. I could even I could even remove this part here. And note that this is something that only is only visible if we if we are using the dirt mask. Without the dirt mask, you won't see anything, uh, or at least it's really hard to see or perceive. But those artifacts might show up depending on your print settings if you wanna do a print a printout of of this drawing. I don't like to remove too many artifacts, but I think that for this one, this is going to make it a bit better. We can just right. Yep. Okay. And this is probably you know this is probably too much, but that makes sure we make sure this way that we don't have to come back to this drawing and, and edit it again this is edited really well and there's no and it's on the highest resolution of of this drawing right let's see we can find other artifacts in here you know, and sometimes it helps if you have black, you can increase the contrast a bit. So if you look at this light effect, many times this is a 54. If I were to increase the light, we lose detail, but we get rid of some of those artifacts automatically. So maybe we just increase a bit there. All right. There shouldn't be many major artifacts and and the most important is that with the selection we did before, we remove all the artifacts that might be at the borders of the canvas and might show that the scan is, is this size of rectangle. Okay, we hide our dirt mask now and we have our almost finished drawing. I would say maybe I could add a bit of contrast in here. So just to this area of the drawing. So let's take out the, the toolbar and select yeah or maybe we'll use the color range or the well what about the magic one
yeah so I could come into here and inside of the color I could say maybe this is a local uh, the tag the, the disket tag and we we can pump it a bit to white maybe even black and white what do you think don't like to take things that have color to complete black and white but I even like this match texture of the paper there but either way I mean you'll see the drawing in you know in the globally when it's out there all right so this is the sketch as I will edit it I then said let's see so I have this sketch I can click on save we have done our white, black, and color, and then we added this selections thing that I'm going to actually remove because we have the selection of the disket in this color mask. And as I click on, on save, I already did uh, command S, I'm going to close this. Now we go back to the initial folder. We now have the PSD and the scan. And what I'm going to do is like, I open this, I click on command shift S or save as, in the file menu and I'm going to save this as edit so these I can probably take back to 11 or 10 doesn't really make much difference and if I was to uh, edit this for the web I will edit and save as for web so I will save as a JPEG maybe compress to 60 of quality and I usually put it at 2500 because images are not rendered that big. So if we fit this, you know, you still can see most of its quality. We save this with a given naming convention. I tend to, to do it like this. We save the PSD and we have our edited sketch in here. So this is a, a smaller version of the of the sketch that is lighter. We see sizes um, here. Let me just make this a bit more visible. The initial scan was almost five megabytes. The PSD, we've kept it down to 82 megabytes. And then the exported high quality edit at 2.5. The web version is 640 KB. What else would I do now? So I have the original edit, which is as it was on the page. I haven't really reformatted or touched anything, but really I would go into here. So I would go into the sketch and do some, uh, I don't know, let's call it structural edits. In this case, I might want to just keep the drawing like that. So I'm just going to save as, um, so we're going to archive a copy actually. So we're just going to archive a copy of these two in another folder. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. And I'm just gonna keep working over this same file. <coughs> so we're going to make, um, and yeah, and there is something that I was gonna forget. So let's just go back to this look list. So we've seen exporting and saving. We've seen selecting by color and range and dirt map, but we haven't seen the high pass. So let me actually retract a bit and wait until we archive those. This sketch has been edited in full, but there's one thing that I wanna add to the action and that's adding a high pass. What is a high pass? High pass is an effect that adds a bit more sharpness to your drawing. As you can see, the pores of the paper make the scan a bit blurry. Right, they, the colors are not sharp or the, the strokes are not completely sharp. They're a bit, um, a bit blurry. And you'll see what I mean by that. So how do you make a high pass? I have a few actions here and, and to see what it is. So I have 1.2 high pass and 2.0 and 4.0. So this high pass, if I select the, the sketch image and play this action, it creates this high pass layer and I'm going to do it again with high pass two and again with high pass four. These are actions that I have created. If we look at the hundred percent of the drawing, 
and or maybe a 200 and get the high pass 4 out you see there is this um, sharpness or more detail is unveiled from the drawing two is this one and then one is this one four here it seems to be adding the most but I like to look at these from the outside so to see how much detail they actually add right so four seems to be adding the most detail in this case and it's more notable noticeable in here right you see how much sharper and maybe I don't know through the video how much you see it but there is some sharpness to it that unveils details. The number, so 1.2, 2.0, and 4, is the radius of the effect that we have to apply to, to get this um, result. And we're going to see how to do that right now. So we'll build a high pass 3.0, for instance, and apply it to, <coughs> to our uh, long running action. What I like to do is to add the multiple high passes to the action. And that way later I can quickly see which one is uh, better for the drawing that I'm editing and just save that one. All right, so high pass, let's see. The high pass layer, as you can see here, is in overlay mode. What overlay mode does is it doesn't really let you see what the layer is, but this is what the layer mask, also the, the overlay, uh, mask is so this is a high pass you can see it has blacks and whites to detect the edges or the hard edges on the drawing and to add more detail to the texture to it it's like a bump map on, on 3d editing or something like that and if we compare them you can see that the grade or like the degree in which this effect is applied is at a smaller detail uh, grade. You see this is one point. Let's just take a look here. This is uh, 1.2. No, this is actually 2.0. So this is 1.2, 2.0, and then this is 4. You see it's, it's blurrier. The, the blur effect uh, radius is bigger as we move up. And you can see the different effects. Let's see here, so 1.2 two and four and here we can see four to one point two and you know as we have this on the drawing you know we can delete it and then put it here and this is what the effect shows up which is a gray mask with what's higher and what's lower and now what we do is we put this in overlay mode and that makes it bump the detail you see so from here to here from here to here all right let's see how to do that so we remove this one we save and what we want to do first is uh, start recording so we're going to make a new action that we're going to call um, high high pass 3.0 so I think that's how the other ones are named yep and the set is sketch so we're gonna click on record so now we're recording all we have to do is we duplicate the layer that we want to to do the high pass to we name it as high pass 3.0 so we know later and this layer is exactly the same except that we're going to now go to filters other high pass and now we're just going to change the radius in this case to 3.0 right in this panel as we change the the filter radius we can see it changing so you can see from one zero doesn't do anything and then you start adding more 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 and more detail so in this case it's zero is three sorry and now we have it here now we just put it to to overlay and and that's it so we have a, a high pass of three and we're gonna 
stop recording because that's that's what we wanted. So now we have, I have these four actions with different gradients of or, or radiuses of high pass. And, you know, this might be better than four, I'm not sure, but I like the detail that four was adding, the grain, and I'm gonna keep four. So this would be my edited page. And the last thing we're gonna do here, so we're gonna we're gonna save that and I'm gonna go to my action and at the end I'm going to keep recording. I'm gonna tell it to select the sketch scan layer. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do select my high pass to You see, I select my high pass to 1.2 function here or action and I click on play. And that plays and then it adds an action says play action high pass 1.2. What I have to do now is um, go into here and uh, ba -ba -ba. and select the um, one uh, yeah so we select the sketch scan layer again and have to once again go to high pass 2 and play we now select the sketch scan folder uh, layer again we press in high pass 3 we select it again and we press on high pass 4 all right, so we've added that. We're gonna stop our action right now. And that should be it. So this is not something I want in this specific drawing. You can see how much grain in the compound effect it added. So if we remove this all at the same time, you see the drawing super blurry and now super detailed or super, um, yeah, with a lot of uh, artifacts. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to keep the, the high pass four that I had before. And we're going to save and we're going to delete the edit file that we had before. We're going to save us and we're going to save our edit file in here. So I now click there. And because I'm going to recreate that later, I delete the sketch and I make an archival copy of both of the PSD and the edit version because we're now going to reformat for the web and this will be the last um, thing that I showed you today. So we've gone through the high pass and yeah, so we're gonna stop for a second and we'll keep going. I hope you enjoyed it and we're gonna see now how to reformat this sketch into a, a different version. But in, in summary, you know, we've, um, we've covered how to go um, from this sketch here on the on the left of the diskette into an edited version and uh, we've seen a bit of how to do in this one but we haven't edited either this one or this one that we might do as well uh, we've created an action that reproduces our folder structure for editing sketches in one go for new sketches that we can now use and you know let me know if you like this video because that way I'll continue creating tutorials that are similar and make sure to subscribe to get notified um, when there are new videos and when I do a live stream. Uh, just to reiterate what we've achieved today, we created this action. You know, we open our panel here and we have this sketch. We can go to, uh, to our actions panel and click on the sketch editing structure um, action that we created today. We can click on play cross our um, fingers and hope that everything is working fine, right? So now we added a bit of extra processing time because all these high passes are being generated. Maybe a good uh, thing to do is to uh, hide them. So let's let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, all right, so uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the last piece. I'm gonna click on record, deselect everything. And now I'm going to uh, click here and hide, click here and hide, click here and hide, and click here and hide, and deselect once again and close it. Once again, we'll try this action from the very beginning. 
by clicking on the action and clicking play. And you know, that extra processing time because the high pass for such big images takes time. And now what we can see is that if we go here and click on high pass four, now we're adding that much detail to the texture of the paper and to the strokes and the, the watercolor. So now we can easily see which degree of high pass is the one that we like the most and, and, and go from there. Another trick, last trick that I forgot to show is uh, how I get, if you want to get the, the perfect uh, or the, your preferred high pass for an image, how do you do it? The process is a bit different than what we did before to record the action, but we simply duplicate this layer. So we say uh, high pass, let's say custom. And now we set this to overlay directly. You see how it like saturates the colors a lot. After we set that to overlay, what we can do is that we can go into the high pass filter and now we'll see the result live. So now we'll see here we can change this to four. So you see the result there. We change it to one. Zero doesn't do almost anything. So 0 0.1. And we can uh, preview what this effect does for each of the parameters. You can appreciate here how after, you know, if we're in, in the range of one to four or five, we're getting more detail. But as we go over, you just like add a contrast to the drawing and, and alter the, the color scheme and, and the detail a lot. So this would be like a contrasted drawing with a, with a high pass, it's just saturating the darks to dark and the whites to white. This might be a good way to edit a sketch quickly. Um, but for me, this effect, I just wanted to add a bit of texture. You, know, you could say, okay, my sketch is, is okay if I just edit it here with a high pass. That is something, it's a technique that is used in photography as well. But we can come in to here because what we just want is to recover the lost um, texture on the paper and the strokes. And this would be, you know, a 3.4 high pass. So maybe you can rename this to 3.4 afterwards. And yeah, and that would be it. All right. So once again, thanks so much for, for seeing all this content today. I hope that uh, you get something out of it. And I would really appreciate it if you want to write comments, if you want to uh, tell me any other tricks or things that you do or if this was useful to you and what other videos you'd like to see next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.